Okay, I'm here today re-recording a video that I recorded yesterday about my pens. Uh, specifically, mostly fountain pens, but we're starting off with some pens that aren't fountain pens, so here we are. Now, this is the most professional of my filming setups because I have a tripod in front of me making this entire thing exceptionally awkward. So, here we've got some non-fountain pens. Um, right here you see a couple of uh, dip nib pens. Um, I don't know where I got this. This might have been on a free table at work. So that's a thing. And then um, I bought this and I think these nibs probably from Jet Pins. That's my guess. This is a, what's this called? Well, it's got the word zero in it. It says on there. Look, it's a nib. That's what it's called. And I just got this holder yesterday, and the reason I got it is because this one gets all rusty, and this one's too fat to fit into some of my ink bottles. So this one is just right, and honestly, it just barely has clearance. Uh, and then this is a glass dip pen that I just got. You can see there's some dichroic glass in there that makes it all shiny and pretty. This is really nice for testing inks because the dip pens pick up way more ink and lay down way more ink, I should say, than a fountain pen would. And a glass pen writes a lot like, this one at least writes like a lot like my broad fountain pen that I just got. Spoilers. So starting off with that, these, these types of things, this is for calligraphy and not for everyday writing. So uh, we're going to do this temporarily. And I've got this list of pens, and they're all sitting behind me. So I think this is maybe the f one of the first pens I got. I actually think the very first pen I got I don't have anymore. It was a Pilot Metropolitan. The reason I don't have it is Pilot has these, um, well, whatever, look, I broke it, okay? Um, so this is a Noodler's Charlie pen. This is the free pen that you get with uh, his really large bottles of ink. The entire body of this pen can be filled up with ink and you can see mine is fairly stained because the pen, the ink I got was Heart of Darkness and also I just don't, I put whatever ink I want in here, it was free. This is a pretty good pen, um, especially considering that it was free. It is nothing fancy, I don't particularly like the colors, but it was a free pen and you know, it was nice to get a free pen with a bottle of ink. And then, um, just consulting my notes, the next pen I believe I got was this Lamy Vista. Uh, the Vista is like a safari. That's another Lamy pen or Lamy, whatever. I don't know. I, I listened to a German guy say it and two different German guys and they pronounced it differently, so I'm confused now. I just recently bought a left-handed nib for this. I don't think my camera is focusing on it, but that's okay. Uh, and this is now one of my favorite pens. <laughs> it was also, it's, it's a very affordable pen. I highly recommend it. Um, it's not inked right now. This, what you see in here is the cartridge converter. So you put ink in that, or you can use uh, Lamy cartridges. And I like that this is a, a, a push to close pen cap because it lets you take notes quickly because, you know, that's super important to all of us. Um, I'm pretty sure the next pen I got was this, which is a Caveco Sport in this really pretty pink color. Uh, it's super short. If you try to write it, without putting the cap on the back. I think that's only gonna work if you have relatively small hands. Otherwise you put the cap on the back and it's a normal size pen. So here's my thing that I did from yesterday. So let's write on the next page. You can kind of see through there. Let's write uh, today. So this is, this is a Coleco, Coleco Sport. I think this ink is Noodler's Black Swan and Australian Roses, but I can't be sure. 
I like this pen, but uh, also because this whole part, oops, whoops, can be filled up with ink, or you can use little cartridges. I filled the whole thing up with ink because I used to think that's what I wanted. Also, spoilers. That describes many of my pens. And then the next pen that I think I got, <laughs> memory fails me, is this. This is the Noodler's Ahab, which <laughs> I misnamed yesterday, so that was one of the reasons I wanted to uh, refilm this. But this is a, a Noodler's pen. It was a pretty inexpensive one. It is piston filling pens. You unscrew this blind cap and it gets at the piston. Boop, boop, boop. So you, you do this, you put it in the ink, you turn that thing, and it sucks the ink up into there. So I did that. I, I filled this with, I think it was Pilot Iroshizuku Tsutsuji. And I had the pen in this case. And I don't know if you'll be able to see right here, sort of pink coloring, which exactly matches up with this top part of the cap because it leaked out of there. So I don't know if the ink was just too wet for it, but I kind of haven't gone back to it since then. Maybe I should give it another try or might get rid of it, you know. We'll see. We'll see whatever feels good. I gotta like just leave this notebook open so I can reference. Because that pushes up my mat. You know what? Get over it. Okay. Then I think my next pen was this Butte. Oh, I'm getting a text. I bet you can hear that. It's wonderful. This is an Ever Sharp. I think it might be a Wall Ever Sharp. Unsure. I think it might be a Doric Junior. Unsure. I bought this at Fountain Pen Hospital in New York. It is a ink sack, which I need to replace. So you lift up on this and a bar in there squishes down on the ink sack. You put the tip in and then you whoop and the vacuum sucks the ink up inside. This is a beautiful nib. It is, I don't know, I think it's 18 karat gold. It is super flexy and wonderful. Writes beautifully. I can't show you that though because I don't have a working ink sack in it. Um, I like this pen, but it's green and gold, and neither of those are my favorites. So I'm kind of considering getting rid of it. Um, so that's a little bit sad, but whatever. Then my next two pens is actually three pens, or maybe you say the next three pens are two. Um, I wanted to get my boss, because uh, I had been really into fountain pens, and I wanted to get my boss a nice pen, because the both of us took notes. So what I did is I bought three of these. These are the Keras Customs uh, Fountain K, and uh, this one's black, the whole thing. This is, I mean, this feels indestructible. I feel like I could run over it on my, with my car. If you hear it. Or maybe you can't hear that. You could probably hear that. Probably just blew out the mic. Anyway, um, you're welcome. So I bought this black one. I bought this blue one with this silvery part here. And I bought one that was all this. I think this is aluminum, like, you know, airplanes are made out of. Anyway, I bought one that was all brushed aluminum. And I told him, hey, which of these do you want? And he picked the all aluminum one. So I gave him that. And I kept these two. And maybe I didn't make an offer of this blue one because this blue one is glorious. The, this, the color of this is so good. It kind of reminds me of a nice phthalo blue. Um, I love it. I, I just, this color, is, it sinks to my heart. So those were my next pens. And that is already too many pens. But at this point, I really wanted to to bring more people into using fountain pens because I use them with uh, bottles of ink. So theoretically, if you have just one pen and bottles of ink, then that's environmentally friendly. If you buy 200 pens, less so. So anyway, I went on to eBay 
<laughs> and I bought 12 of these glorious little shark pins. Uh, I bought, they came in a case, which I still have, I would show you, but it's got pins in it right now. And it came in 12 different colors. This one is pink, surprise, I kept that one. And I actually kept the blue one for a real long time. It was kind of this color. Um, also no surprise because it's my favorite color. And I gave the rest of them away to coworkers along with some ink. This pin actually, it, it was less than $2 a piece. I think it was $16 for all 12 of them. Um, ridiculous. Maybe there were 10. Either way, that's still amazing. And it writes pretty well, to be honest. And the great thing about this pen is if you break it, if something happens, who cares? I've actually was just thinking last night what I should do with this is send it to my nephew or my niece. Because uh, how fun would that be if you had a shark pen? It'd be really fun, right? I'd, I'd be anti of the year. Um, and that's what matters. So then I think my next pen was this Nemocene Singularity because I was all about, I should have as much ink as possible so I don't have to fill it up all the time. Um, I did keep bottles of ink at work. I don't know why I was worried about it. So this pen, it came with some inside stuff, but what you can do is put an O-ring here and some silicone grease around here and then you can fill the entire body of this with ink. And so I did that, and I like it. Uh, I, I, this pen is perfectly acceptable. It's got some cracks here, it looks like. I don't know, I don't have very good glasses on. And then someone at work broke the cap, the, the um, clip, I should say. And that was kind of frustrating to me. Not that, I actually did use the clip, because what I would do is I'd stick either the body of the pen or the clip of the pen in my three ring notebook that I took notes in. So that was really a bummer and an inconvenience, which meant that then it just stayed on my desk and I didn't use it and I still don't really use it. So that one I almost certainly will get rid of. This next pen, so this was one of my first FOMO, if you're missing out, pen purchases. This is a Lamy. Interesting though, I'm just going to point this out. As a lefty, all of these logos are the wrong way around. So I don't understand why that happens because to heck with you, we exist. Thanks. Maybe you could like do it on the other side facing the other way so I could read it. Whatever. Um, I love this color. It's, it's a dark teal. Um, maybe not quite like the shark's jerseys, but... Anyway, and I got this pen at a W.H. Smith in Pontefract in England. Um, I still remember the excitement I felt when I saw it there because it was a little bit like I didn't expect to see it. They, they weren't new anymore. Uh, the sad thing is that this barrel cracked right here. You, you may be able to tell that it looks a little bit funny. And that's because I put uh, Gorilla Glue in there to hopefully keep it together so that I can keep using it because I really like Lamy pens. They are very smooth to write with. So far, none of these other ones have ink because these did, but I just cleaned them out. You know, these things happen. Then, um, by the way, the order that in which I acquired all of these is vague at best. So I think the next pen I got was a gift. Um, this one right here is the, is it still form, steel form, whatever. It's called the was called the Cosmos pen. Cool thing about this is the cap is kept on with a magnet. And so it's kind of fun to play with. Just, if you twist it, the cap will come off because the opposing forces. Anyway, and um, I, I got this from my boss. He gave it to me with the um, uh, steel nib, but Recently, in an effort to make old things feel new and not want to buy more pins, <laughs> um, I bought myself a titanium nib for it. So, let's check that out. So this is the Cosmos with the titanium nib. And this ink is 
color verse, and it's called From Cali. It's a bit light, but fortunately this is a pretty wet pen, so you can still kind of mostly read it. Uh, I don't know if I'd buy it again, but it's, it's called From Cali. So I like that pen quite a lot. I'm glad I replaced the nib because the other nib was fine, but this nib is now the only titanium nib I have, and so that makes it special. And who doesn't want that? Um, and then, all right, I almost skipped over like 10 years worth of pens. Just kidding. The next pen I got, I believe, is this pen I got from Muji. And um, this was a really inexpensive pen. It's all metal, I think aluminum. Well, the exterior, the body, except maybe that isn't. It, it feels smushy. And it's just really sleek. I don't know if I said, I think it was $10. This isn't wanting to go in there as well as it used to. I wonder what that's about. Well, whatever, it's in there now. You cap it. It is really nice. Um, I, th I bought a converter for it because I believe it came with just cartridges. This is a really okay pen, right? It, it writes perfectly fine. Uh, the, the line it lays down is pretty thin. All that said, I'm probably getting rid of it. I do feel like it's a real like businessman kind of pen. I guess it could be a businesswoman pen too. Either way, somebody who dresses nicer than I do on a daily basis. <sighs> who needs more pens? So apparently I do. My boss got me another gift. Um, this one is made from a uh, barrels. So I can't remember if it's wine barrel or, or bourbon barrel, but that's okay. I like both whiskey and wine. And it's really neat. So this again, magnetic cap, which is super fun to play with. This, an, a neat feature is that it's got what they call blind cap, which exposes the turning knob for the piston filling, the cartridge converter. Um, I don't usually use that because generally when I need to uh, maybe if I was inking this for the first time, but usually when I'm done with an ink, I'm going to wash it out and put another ink in because I have, this is a surprise to you all, I'm sure. I have a number of inks. So I like this pen. I don't use it a ton. It's really chunky, but I actually kind of like that. Uh, it feels really good. It's, it's, a, it's a good size. <laughs> and the cap actually does go on the back and it's magnetic in there, so it'll stay. It makes it heavy, but whatever. I like that pen. Then, no pens for a while, but I started a new job, my current job, and I thought, well, I tend to take a lot of notes and make to-do lists, so I thought I will get a pen to celebrate this. And I didn't, I noticed this problem yesterday and I didn't clean it out today so that you'd still see that it's a problem. So this is the Moon Man, uh, I looked this up, M2, as in Maria 2. I'm pretty sure that's what the M stood for. Um, the whole body here fills up with ink. Again, this ink is looking a little bit viscous. Maybe it's old. But you can see it got ink in the cap. What's that about? Um, this is a perfectly pleasant pen. Um, I did replace the nib with with a, a thicker one. I, I'm the, the nib that it came with was fine. I got a medium from Goulet Pens. So let's take a look at this. So when we say this was, this is the Moon Man M2. Unknown. This might be Heart of Darkness. That's the black ink I own. Ooh, it's all shiny. Mm, that's nice. Um, so I like this pen, but I'm not married to it, but it does have a special place. Cause like I said, I bought this to start at the start of getting my new job. Um, however, I buy pens to use them for the most part. So that doesn't mean I'm going to be super precious about it. So it's still wet. 
Then the next pin I got was, say, two years later, just about. Um, and I believe I know the rest of these orders by heart, so we'll just try and breeze through them. So there's a pin that came out, and the color was Prussian Blue. Prussian Blue is one of my favorite blues. Um, it's like the paint color. Uh, I have it in watercolors. I had it when I had acrylic. Uh, um, Maria, where it's paint. I think it is really just a beautiful, beautiful color. And then, so when this pin came, I couldn't help but be disappointed because to me, the color that it is, while pretty, is not Prussian blue. Uh, I do think, oh, I'm missing a pin here. I'm going to have to pause and get it. I do think that this pin is really cool. I think the clip on it looks like very sci-fi. Like you could picture this being used by uh, someone on Star Trek, I'm sure. This cap, also nice, is just a lift on, lift off and not screw. Um, I probably got this in a medium if I could because I felt like I enjoyed that. This comes with this really neat, it also come, came with a standard, this one. Uh, converter, but this is rrr, 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 like a vacuum filler. So you you put it in there, and then you and then the the ink fills. So that's pretty neat. I like that novelty. Look at, I cleaned this pretty thoroughly. I like that novelty. It also came with um, you can use ink cartridges, and it came with the regular kind of converter. So this one I bought in this fall. And that began the, the frenzy. So what happened is that I found a beautiful, beautiful pen that I fell in love with. And it cost, I don't know, $1,000. And I thought, mm -mm, nope. And then I, so then I started looking for a similar pen that was more affordably priced. And I found this. This is the Le Bon skeleton pin in the rainbow color. And what I discovered when I was making this video the first time is that this pin case is also Le bon. So funny. I didn't know that. didn't realize that until I was making the video. So this pin, something I felt I uh, is really nice about it is that they have their own converter. And this is as clear as can be, really, so that it's not, it's, you can see it through the pen, but it's not ostentatious or in the way. This pen writes beautifully. I was, uh, I, you can do this, you can put the pen, the cap on the back, but it's heavy and I don't like to do that. So I just write with it out it. And I love this pen so much. It's like, just so happy making. And it's nice to, this is a nice cap to hold, uh, to like, f you feel all the cutouts in it. But I, I just adore this pin. Um, and so this was going to be the last pin I ever bought. <clears throat> so, uh, except then I was reading, you know, I really have too much of a death grip. And I read that one of the things you can do to like loosen up is to use a fatter pen. So I bought this guy. This is a Jinhao 159. It's a Chinese pen. It is a and big pen. If we want to look at an example, this, this little Muji pen next to it. It is just massive. Um, so I thought I'd see how it is to write with. It's nice. It is a very heavy pen. The cap is, there is no way you could do this. There's no way I would do this. It's too heavy. Um, the, the writing aspect of it is nice. I haven't found yet that it prevents me from having a death grip. Hopefully that will happen because I have a death grip and it'd be nice to not do that. 
And I bought two pens at this time. This was one of them. So I bought the Jinhao 159. And I bought one of the most ridiculous pens I've ever seen. I just checked the listing for this and they called it the Little Fat Man. This is the Moon Man Q1. Again, you can fit, the amount of ink you can fit in the body of this pen is ridiculous. He's the entire contents of a sample bottle of ink. This, this pen, like, y'all, this, like, this pen, it's just, it's so funny to me. It's the little fat man. I love this pen so much. And it's not uncomfortable to write with. It might be a little bit for most people. Uh, I think if you hold your pen correctly where it rests on the middle finger, it's a little short. I hold it on my ring finger and that actually means that it pushes the pen back further and that is more comfortable. Or you can put the, the lid on uh, to write with it. This one has ink. This has, well, we'll write that down. So this is the... Uh, Moonman Q1, and the ink is Red Dragon. It's by Diamine. Diamine? Diamine. Look, whatever. You'll find it. It's called Red Dragon. Um, love it. Uh, uh, although, I will say this. A friend of mine, I posted a picture, and a friend of mine was like, you know, I love that little fat man. So he might get this pen if he really wants it. I'll have to figure out a color of ink to put in there for him. I don't think he's ready for Red Dragon. But he might be appropriate to, to get Heart of Darkness. So all of these pens, with the exception of this, oops, have steel nibs. And I thought, you know, Maria, your collection is missing something. It's missing a pen. It's missing a pen with a gold nib. And so I thought, well, I can fix that. <laughs> My fingers are increasingly covered with ink. So I looked online and what I thought about was, you know, I want a pen from a maker who makes their own nibs. And I found this brand. So this is Santini Italia. This is the Libra model. Uh, it is a piston filled pen. What that means is right here, back you twist this. This is would be sucking up the ink and then it clicks when it's all the way. So, and they make their own gold nibs. So this is a, I believe, rhodium plated a gold nib that they make in house. And I love this pen so much that I'm willing to overlook Mostly the fact that the nib came to me in suboptimal condition. Probably going to send this to someone to fix it because it kind of feels like the tipping is wrong. Like I feel roughness. So bummer about that, but it does write really well. It's just that uh, the, the tines get caught on one another. So I should have sent it back, but I didn't. And here we are. What I should do is just order another one, and then that one will be perfect. I really like the clip on this, how it has a little wheel. I think that's cute. This pen is so fat. I love it also. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a bigger than usual, but very comfortable. Again, you could put the lid on the back, but I don't anymore. I've gotten out of the habit. I sometimes will stick it on my pinky and hold it, or sometimes just hold it in my hand like this, and sometimes try and be normal and just set it down. But I love this pen. It's not inked right now because I was trying to look at the nib. I got a loop and everything. It was magical. So at the same time, I ordered this. This is a Pilot. So again, my first pen was a Pilot Metropolitan. This is the Pilot Custom 912. I got it with a soft, fine nib. The retailer I bought it from did not have a soft medium, which is almost certainly... The, the nib I should have gotten. This is, again, a, a uh, this is a 14 karat gold nib. It is really beautiful. 
very classy, right? Like this could be a business person's pen. Like, oh, I'm an adult. Look at me. I have a, a an adult pen. Um, I hope everybody looks at their writing implements that way. Uh, <laughs> You're crazy, Maria. So uh, the thing about this is it's a little fine for me. And it writes wonderfully, but I've come to discover I like a fat nib. So what I'm going to do, however, is learn to love this more. I'm going to fill it up completely. It's got a really neat uh, a, a cartridge. So you push down this and it like pumps the ink up in. Uh, I'm going to fill it completely and write through with a really nice juicy wet ink and then see if by then I love it. If I don't, I'll sell it. It's it, because it, it was, I, I would give it away, but it was fairly expensive. <laughs> and so since speaking of pens that make you feel like an adult, the next one I got was this. This is by Bennu. They're a Russian company. And this is called the Grand Scepter. And this just makes me so happy. <laughs> it's got blue and purple glitter. These pink parts, they glow in the dark. Um, and... The nib on it is really nice, too. This is a steel nib. It's not gold, but that's okay. This will not obviously fit on the back. But, again, you could just, like, stick it on one of your fingers. Not too far because, like, it'll get stuck and that'll be awkward. And then you could, you could hold it in your hand or you can set it there and be like, look at my fancy pink pen with glitter. I'm an adult. Um, this – I bought this after I said I wasn't buying any more pens because <laughs> – I couldn't resist. So that's my collection, right? Because I said I wasn't buying any more pins. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I thought about, more about my collection. I realized I love inks with glitter in them. I got the Diamine Ink Vent Calendar, which came comes with 24 sample bottles and one full-size bottle of ink, and some of those have glitter. So I thought I need a pen to write with glitter with. And what is important for a pen like that is that you want something you can take apart so you can clean it thoroughly. Uh, I say glitter. The, the fountain pen world calls it shimmer, whatever. It's like micro glitter. Um, and I, you want a, a pretty broad, fat nib. So I was looking at some cheaper pens for this. But then I thought, why well, get a cheap pen? You could get an expensive pen. So uh, this is not, however, my most expensive pen. That's probably this one. Uh, no, I lie. It's the one from Italy. Der it came all the way from Italy. Anyway, so this is the Twisby VAC 700R in the iris color, which was limited edition. So I felt well chuffed that I was able to find this somewhere. That nib is spectacular. I did ink this up. And y'all, y'all, I fell in love. This is so, oops, I'm already off to a good start. Twisby bag, 700R. And this ink is... Emerald of Chivor by J. Urban. This started a craziness, this ink, in the fountain pen community. Um, because it's, I don't know if it was the first ink of its kind, but maybe. Maybe the first mainstream ink of its kind. So, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. It has what is called sheening. In other words... So it is a teal ink, but there is a pink slash reddish sheen that shows. And if sheen, if you think of the way that you can see rainbows on gasoline, that's kind of like sheening. And it also has glitter in it. And holy good night, this writes wonderfully, wonderfully. And just so fat and juicy. My goodness. My, it was love at first write. <laughs> I hate myself for saying that, don't worry. And now we're coming up to my actual last pin that I own. 
forever, right? No, that's a lie. I already know a couple more pins that I want to buy that'll be like, oh, I'm going to go on vacation and get these pins because I kind of want a Pelican um, 800, 805 really. And they'll be cheaper to get in Germany or Amsterdam, either way, Europe. So, but this is my last one that I just got. This is the, if you may have seen that video, this is the Platinum 3776. The finish in it is a uh, nice, pure P-U-R. Uh, and it's pretty cool. I did not love this immediately. So this is a medium nib. And something you should know, because probably you don't know much about pins, if you're a friend of mine or a family member, uh, but... German pens, Western pens, so like a Lamy, versus Japanese pens, the nib size is not created equal. So if you think of like just a, a pen like this, this is, I use these for sewing, it's a friction, and it's a, a 0.7, that's millimeter line width. Fountain pens don't do that. There's many reasons that would make that difficult um, because the harder you push down when you write, the more ink could come out, the wider the line could be. The wetter the ink that you put in your pen, the wider the line could be. So it's hard to come up with a standard, I suppose. But a Japanese medium writes more like a Western fine. And we talked already about how I seem to really like... Um, broad nibs or medium nibs. So just trying to see if I can read. I think this titanium nib is a medium, I suspect, and I suspect I wouldn't have gotten a broad. So anyway, this is a, a medium and you'll see, you can compare. <laughs> so we have the medium. And this ink is called, oops, we got the eye in there, California. It's by Sailor. How could I not get it? It's called California. And the interesting thing is, this is a medium nib. That's a fine, it's a medium nib. This is a fine nib. That's a medium nib. So you can see these two look almost the same. The difference is Moon Man. I did say, I did say. Well, it's Japanese, so Chinese pens tend to write more like Western. I don't know. That's kind of interesting, right? Why do we say Western if it's also Chinese? Huh. Someone should point that out. Um, anyway, so I've been writing with this a lot yesterday, and I, I, I love it. It's actually, it writes pretty wetly. So even though it's a very fine pen, it does write wet. Um, and this ink makes it happy. It, it does like this Sailor ink, and I've heard that's, uh, that Sailor makes fairly wet inks. And Sailor is also a Japanese company. So to me, it kind of makes sense that Japanese pens like Japanese inks because, uh, well, reasons that I can't articulate well. So anyway, this was a maybe not so quick as the first run through of my pen collection. Oops, let's just uh, bang the camera around for you. I've heard that that's what professionals do. They bang the camera around and then apologize. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bang the camera around and then not apologize because I'm not a professional. So here's my pens. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, if you could only have one of your pens, what would it be? Now, I don't know. I'm inclined to think this one, but then there's this guy. And all these guys, I mean, look at this pen. I suppose in some ways, the right answer is the vintage one. Because all these others are fairly easily replaceable. Um, the, the only one with, there's a, maybe there's two that have sort of actual, like, I did the thing memories. So the, this one getting it in England. This, this vintage one getting it in New York City, Manhattan. But then also, like, what about the pins my boss gave me? Those are lovely. I love them. 
So anyway, stop trying to take away my pins. Uh, look, you know, I'm going to get rid of some of them. You, it's fine. I, uh, and hopefully I won't add too many more. What I'm going to have to do is come up with a, like, some come in, some go out. I do think that there are a few I already know I'm getting rid of. The Muji, probably the shark, the Nemesine, almost certainly this. Noodlers. Maybe these chonkers. Now that I have more chonkers. Especially this one I would have kept, but my friend says he likes it. And I am all about enabling people to write with fountain pens. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I had a blast making it. Uh, I kind of would love to show you my filming setup. This is my wool pressing mat that I use for sewing. Right here is my bedside lamp. And my laptop is here. The tripod's in my way. But we are professional today. <laughs>